What's up, Mad Crab family? And thank you for joining us for another episode of Mukbang Mondays. Today, I am super excited because I'm joined with the people that make this happen, the behind the scenes. From within arts, I have Tay Tuan and Naya Turner. What's going on, you guys? Uh, uh. Well, let's just give them a little tour of what we got going on before we bust down. We got some potatoes. We got a few crawfish. We got corn, sausage. We got fried crab. We got fried shrimp, steamed shrimp. And of course, my favorite, we got a few Dungeness crab and snow crab back here in the back along with a few boiled eggs. All right, okay. And, and then, don't forget the lobster. Oh, the, 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 the lobster, yes. Okay, so we got steamed lobster and fried lobster today. Okay, and for sauces, of course, we got the mad crab savory. But today, I made, we made some spicy mad crab savory sauce because Naya here is a spice freak, I heard. Okay, so, um, and then for drinks today, let me see what I'm working with here. Oh, I got some pineapple peach lemonade made by mad crab seafood and wings. What you got, Naya? I got pineapple cotton candy. Cotton candy. candy. I got some pineapple lemonade right here. All right. right there, so y'all come in here, go ahead and get some of this. Cause I've been sitting on before the video started. It's good. It's good. You ain't put nothing in that drink, did you? No, no. Oh, okay, get a regular pineapple lemonade. <laughs> I ain't All right. All right. Well, let's get started. Let's bust down. Whatever y'all want, let's make it happen. I'm gonna start with the fried lobster. I'm gonna start with this fried lobster right here. I've been craving this fried lobster all day. I'm gonna get a couple bites in before I get y'all to talking. Let's go. Mm. That spicy is on point. I'm not a spicy eater. That's so good. And it's very good. You try that lobster. You that lobster. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I cut these in half. Oh. Nick, can you give us some paper towels, please? Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. A straight meat, boy. Thank you. So, I met y'all a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Um, exactly how did you guys find out about Mad Crab? So basically, I was working at Home First, and my co-worker, Danielle, shout out to Danielle, mm -hmm. <laughs> she told me about Mad Crab, the best food in town, so I made me and my husband come and try it out, and we love it, the best place ever. Well, thank y'all. Y'all pretty much have become family to me. And K-Twan, you've been trying to get me to film and, yeah. Wow. Yeah. A year, or what, about a year ago. We talked about the same thing about a year ago. Yeah. But, you know, I was camera shy. I wasn't ready yet. Well, the most of what I came in, I was thinking about, because, I mean, you know, of course, we're in a time where, First of all, black businesses are uh, vibrant. So when I come into a black business, you know, as somebody who like to help people first, and as a businessman, second, you know, I just want to see, you know, I'm like, you got a commercial. You know, you got this and that. You know, I want to know, you know, how you feel with social media. If it was good, you would have been fine. You know what I'm saying? I don't agree with that. You know, I'm just asking because I'm putting out all of that hand just to try to protect to another level because. I love holding the wrong spots, you know, but I also feel like social media presence and things like that is very important to the business nowadays. So, I first came here, that's one of the questions I asked. It now, definitely. Here we are. Doing mukbangs. Doing mukbangs. Doing mukbangs. Doing mukbangs. Doing mukbangs. Doing mukbangs. And just being open to that, you know, to be progressive for the future. So, well, I'm, I'm definitely glad that I had somebody to push me and to take me out of my comfort zone because 
doing something like this would have definitely been out of my comfort. It's, it is out of my comfort zone. And I would have never done it had you guys not kept pushing me and kept talking about it. And you didn't give up with talking about, you know, with me doing this. And I'm so glad that this is happening for me right now. Me on yeah, like that. yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're capable of until you actually do it. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, here I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to find out a little bit about what you guys do. I mean, I, you know, I got a, a somewhat of knowledge, you know, uh, because I know you guys, but I don't know everything that you guys got going on, how exactly that it works. So tell me, how did you get into photography? Well, I used to live in D.C. at one point, transitioned out of Orlando. Um, you know, just being young, being cool as I am. But I went to D.C. Um, inspired by my, my home for us, Fletcher. Uh, Shout out Fletcher. <laughs> um, he in LA right now, but Fletcher. He, he, <laughs> he went out there, you know, after high school to help um to do this program called City Year. Yeah. City Year is best way to help kids and stuff like that, um, teachers and schools and stuff like that. So basically, you know, not transitioning. He was already finished with that program, and I was doing it. But so we ended up, you know, finding place together because we're, you know, before the board and shit together. Yeah. So basically he had he got a camera. And of course, being a supportive homeboy, I'm gonna come with you, I'm gonna help you out, whatever you need. So and I as, as help when helping him and stuff, I seen, you know, you know, we just, you know, just compatible and truthfully, we've been doing stuff with the cameras in high school. We were doing YouTube videos a long time ago. So it was like before our time to be real with you. So, and I had a camera a long time ago too, but you know, getting a certain DSLR camera and really getting me older, realizing he, he, he basically showed me like what you can do with a camera, you know, start business, and, you know, get money off of stuff like that, and, you know, or something, something that you love to do because see, that's why he actually went to DC because he actually wanted to, he was trying to figure out what he wanted to love, he wanted to go to school because he loved to do. But he inspired me to grab a camera, man. And I grabbed me a camera with my little income tax money. I had when I came back to Orlando after, you know, back in DC. And then when I got my my camera, a little booty camera too now. I want y'all to understand something. Just start. You hear me? No matter what, what budget you got, just start, man. Because I showed up starting, you hear me? I look back at my picture now, I'm like, Lord Jesus. I started here, <laughs> but I was confident, you know what I'm saying? I got my camera, and I ain't been turned back since. That's like seven years ago, so I just, you know, I started, you know, doing photography seven years ago. I pretty much, I was working at Victoria's Secret and doing stock um, in the back, and I just couldn't see myself older the for the rest of my life, you know? So I just looked down like, I'll, I'll be at work just thinking, not really there, you know, just like, I'm going do that. Like I said, my boy, I think about this, I'm like, you know what, man? I'm gonna grab me a camera. First little money I get, that's exactly what I did. Grab me a camera, and eventually I started taking out time to work. You know, wasn't even really getting paid to do these certain shoots I was doing. But I was just doing it for free because I would rather put my time into me versus getting that little, little check I was getting because I see that I can get more eventually um, in the future for photography. So if I, if I did that, man, Eventually, they just pretty much, you know, told me, hey, you know, you're not showing up to work anymore like that. What's going on? You, you want to, you know, you want to just be seasonal? I was like, sure. And I just felt like that was a moment, like, God moment. was just like, you know what? It's time. Like, uh, I just said, you know, they ain't fired me. I just didn't say, you know, you want to be seasonal. I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And I just, I like my season was up with them, so. And I left them ever since. Yeah, I never went back in that school to this. And I can kind of understand um, what you mean about, because um, you know that you are passionate about something. When you can do it, 
and not charge a dime for it. Like yeah. you can do it, you can help people, yeah. and you're not really looking for nothing in between. And you want to, and you can get up and do that every day. Mm -hmm. So that's how I knew that the mad crab seafood and wings was my passion. Right. Because I came here, and when I first opened, I really wasn't making any money. I really wasn't consistent like I needed to be. And I was giving away more food than I was actually making money. But it didn't bother me because I was doing something that I love every single day. And I didn't mind getting up doing it. So I can definitely um, feel you when it comes to that. And Naya, how did you get involved? Were you guys already, how, was, how, did, how did this happen? So, well, basically, I got started into photography because of him. How we met. I don't know, I like when he tells the story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, basically, I'm not in that bed. I'm a photography session. Now, once again, like I said, y'all, just start, you know? Because I was at a point in my life, I just need, you know, I need to get some money, you feel me? So, I had to do some, some cheap shoots, okay? <laughs> $25, $35, something like that. Where you got your like, head shot? It was like $25. No, what, 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 you, did, no, oh, you did a whole shoot for $25. Once again, why are you talking about passion? You feel me? No, I passion. think you saw something you liked and you was like, man. Oh, man, well. <laughs> man, you know, I, you know, I didn't the shoot for plenty. It was your photo shoot. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't shoot for plenty of women. You understand? So. She just helped shoot the new girl. And then, so she came through. When well, she booked me, you know, went through the process, built the DM on Facebook. I don't know how we was friends on Facebook. We still don't know to the day why exactly. Exactly. Well, know, every, so, every, somebody mutual something, and somebody had somebody. Everybody, everything happened for a reason, so it was really? destined to be pretty really? much. Pretty much, you know, so it was pretty dope. But she came over and so she did her shooting. And, you know, I just seen something in her, you know, that this was so simple, so pure. You know what I'm saying? Something basically, I seen this girl like that wasn't like everybody else. Like, I didn't really think I was going to get married this time. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think I'd ever get married. I hate the guy. I just love all the time. So, but she, I didn't get that vibe from her. And we actually had a point where, <laughs> when we talked about later on, but I felt her looking at me. And and she was, and I didn't really know. You know, how somebody put my little man trying to get to himself right now. Trying to look at him sometimes. Yeah, oh yeah, the homegirl came with him. So. My best friend, Kima. Yeah, Kima came with her, and then shout out to Kima. Hello, Kima. And so, yeah, basically, man, from there, I just shake this feeling. My cousin was there, and I was telling my little cousin, this was like seven years old, time. I'm like, hey. I don't understand. I said, well, before I put out my wife. And I literally told him that that day. And I just couldn't shake it. And I was telling my mom, I'm like, Mom, I don't know, I got this feeling. I just can't shake this feeling. Like, I feel like I got to talk to her. I don't know how to do it because I've been so focused on photography so long. I really ain't been out. I ain't really like it. You ain't even like it. You ain't even know how to run games. But honestly, because I'm not a dude that really likes to speak a game. Yeah, it's a, I want to speak a game. I want to do all that. I want to do all that. I was focused. I was really in the place. I'm at the house. I'm working. I'm trying to, you know, do something for myself. You feel what I'm saying? So anything outside of that was just a distraction, basically. So when she came, you know, I was just trying to figure out, like, well, how do I do this? Like, just be you. Be real. That's what I did. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't spend no game. I just called her out, you know, I let her know about her pictures and everything like that. She loved them. And then I hit her up and I said, But here we are. I said, what I say? What I say? Who knows? But here we are. Yeah, I said, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Here we are, man. Years later at the mad crowd. So don't take Facebook for granted, y'all. You feel me? You never know, man. Hell, yeah, you never I know. I'm so amazed. God, you my gift, bro. To connect me to my wife. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. No yeah, you know, like I said, you don't make no mistakes. Mom, I'm on. I don't know how to eat this. Never had a crawfish. Had oh, Lord <laughs> Jesus. You thought she was about to preach. I thought she was about to come home. Well, <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. Come on. Well, let me show you what to do. Okay. So, you're going to take the crawfish. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you're going to pop the tail off. Pop the tail off. Okay? okay. I'm just going to pull out like this. Oh, that's it? Okay, pull out. Okay. So technically, you're supposed to suck, suck the head. Okay, right, but right. I don't I do not do that part. Okay? <laughs> I don't <laughs> suck heads, okay? <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> Shush. Okay, so then you... um. Kind of pop it, you know, take oh, it, put that, because oh. that part right there is kind of like, you know, the boo boo. So you don't want this this little piece right here. Right. Oh, you don't? If you don't want this, that's the tail, throw that out. Okay. Okay, now pull, pull your little meat. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay. Okay, so kind of take this, the top part, and like pull it like a little, you know. Right. Pull, pull, oh, just so slow. No, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> going right okay. What happened now? So, he is slow. Take this part. Oh. Oh. We just having fun. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, I just want to fun. And then you just dip it in the butter. I dip it in the butter. And in case you guys are wondering what I was dipping the fried crab and the fried shrimp in, it's a mayonnaise-based seafood sauce that we make uh, at Mad Crab Seafood and Wings. And we make it from scratch. And so uh, it was designed for just fried foods, but now. It's like a everything sauce because people are dipping potatoes and fries. french fries and corn nuggets and everything else in it. So it's a really good sauce. Um, I don't know how I feel about crawfish. Not too, not too. A lot of people not, you know, you just got to have a taste for it. Yeah, I ain't going to lie to you. all taste the same. You want to put the butter on it. <laughs> well, somewhat. 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 Yeah, somewhat. somewhat. Well, now I feel like women have more, like, attentive to taste and stuff like that. Men, I just thought like, we just... Well, when it comes to like shrimp and but the, the different types of crab would definitely have a different taste, um, even with dipping it in the butter, because some crabs have a more salty taste, some have a more sweeter taste, so it just depends on what kind of crab it is. But that right there is a Dungeness crab. Um, I love fried foods, but I didn't fry it because I know about y'all, how y'all are with y'all, you know, y'all, you know, I like to stay fit. Trying. But <laughs> normally I fry my, my crab as well. Mm. But for this purpose, we're gonna steam it. About that when we go, we only get a certain amount of meat. Now I didn't get her snow crab tray. I get my fried shrimp, well, lemon pepper fried shrimp, and my corn nuggets and fries. But you know the funny thing? Regulars like y'all, y'all come in and y'all get the same thing every time and don't realize that there are other options on the menu. I have people that have been coming to me three, four, even five years. And they're like, oh my gosh, y'all sell crawfish? Like we've been selling crawfish, you know? <laughs> that's what but, we said about the steak. Yeah, but that's because you guys come in, you don't really look at the menu, you kind of yeah. know what you want yeah. and you know, stick and stick to what you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how that works out. We come here, we come for that tree. Mm-hmm. That's a lobster tail. Well, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. 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 So, what do you guys find that find to be the most rewarding, the most rewarding part about photography? So, let me ask you, did, was it just photography in the beginning that you guys did? Or, like, how did you get into, like, videography? Is that all something that's all in one? Or is that something that you learned as you guys went, as you guys started? Well, my wife, she came, like, when I was, like, four years, I even took games or something like that, so. So I was already, I was doing a course of photography, and then I was doing music videos at one point. You know, just a little season. But I was trying to get away from a certain lifestyle, and that like, every time I did music videos, I was around certain things, and I didn't really want to be around it, and I didn't really want to be just known for that. Because mm -hmm. one thing about us, we you know, one of, our, one of our slogans is um, versatility is our capability. We want to make sure people understand that we can do anything, you know, within our standards, of course. And so I was, learning, I was doing music videos in the beginning or whatever. I got a little couple that is way back there. It's hard to find, basically, <laughs> on YouTube, all that stuff. Probably deleted them or hidden them or something like that. But I did a couple of music videos um, on that same little booty camera, you know. and. Yeah, it just ended up growing into basically, which I'm so glad that I talked talk about recently, I'm glad I actually tapped into video 
early like I did because video is a process, you know what I'm saying? Um, but now we do video for our wedding, um, for our wedding packages, for video and stuff like that. And of course, things like this, uh, commercials for businesses and things like that. So, yeah, that's how pretty much I, I, was, I was doing it. Like, yeah. Then when I came, it developed more. You kind of broaden out what you were doing. So over the years, I'm sure you guys have done a lot of work. Um, is there any one particular shoot or video that kind of stands out as maybe your favorite, like your best, or or maybe your best work, or you know? I know the answer that better be for you. For this, picture, for you. Huh? Picture video. Pictures. Well, of course, one that really stand out for me, obviously, when I met him. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, boy, I had to get that ass right away. <laughs> oh, I'm like, what are you talking about, girl? Yeah, so you'd have been sleeping <laughs> on my couch. <cow. laughs> you'd have been sleeping on my couch. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, it is the photo that is on the first photo you see that come on our website. Mm -hmm. And it's been there for years. Because that photo, that photo shoot was not the best plan. Um, but I feel like it speaks. It's, it's been speaking for a long time. It, it, it goes. It just. It just has like it's limited to something. And it's black and white. I like to play with black and white. So I'm black and white, and then even color pop. And it's just been. It's been speaking for a long time. So that's my favorite photo, video. Um, I have a couple web videos. I think. Have you said what's the most rewarding? You said. Like no one that you feel like is your is your. Your favorite, like your, you know, kind of like your best work, something that you, you know, kind of the more. I mean, I know you're probably proud of all the work that you do, but there's always something that we do oh. and we like. That's it. I like, I, I like this one because of the story, behind it, which is uh, Funk Fest. We did Funk Fest, so we did a commercial for Funk Fest because the connection was just, it was like, hey, right. Lord, right there, boy. <laughs> Because that connection was random. We threw some of um, one of the nice family members, referred us. We didn't know that we referred us until we got hit up about it. And basically, the dope thing about that was, it's open hey, doors. yeah, it's opened some of the doors and it was a good check. Um, and basically, I worked with Jack Man at Funk Fest. Okay. And, and from then, that, we were still working for them for, for a nice minute. This black lady that works for them, she put us on, man. Show us love. Shout out to Lolita. Thank you, Lolita. Lolita. Um, you know, she was a solid individual, man. She really, she put us on with that, and that really got some good stuff in our portfolio. Um, and it might help us learn how to uh, work with brands like that. You know, so that, that was that made because of the story behind it. And the video really came out dope. Check that out on our website, on the video, uh, video link portfolio. And I'll make sure that they have all the links to their information in the description below, so you guys won't miss out on that book. Oh. And she's saying that like we ain't the ones that's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's we true. Do it. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I got the best video team and photography team in my corner. Like I feel like I feel like I just won the lotto because you guys do some great work. I've seen We're very professional. You guys have kind of like honestly become my my children. Like I love y'all like y'all my kids, you know. And I just want everybody to know, you know, what you guys do, who's behind the scenes, who pushed me to get, you know, to get out my comfort zone into this part right here. And then with that being said, it's like one thing I want you to understand about us, truthfully, we know we're not the best, right? But we're in our lane, and. It's a lot of great people out here that work and everything, but I can't speak to nobody else. But one thing I can say about us, it's been a thing from the beginning, is we show love. You understand? Um, that, that's just the best thing I can say. We show love has never been solely about money. We work with you, we understand, like, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, of course, we have our standards, of course, and not because I, you know, we do quality work, but we understand. So we come with that approach uh, with anybody, you know what I'm saying? And we just want to talk to us about what the vision may be so we can help you out. And so that's one of the things I think that is genuine. You know, it's not just, oh, just, just talking and just saying this and that. Like, I just didn't matter. We came here, you know, 
I'm talking, I'm talking about I'll be real. I was like, yeah. I really want to help. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I ain't want you to think that I was like cap. You know, but you know, I, I already, I already knew that. You could kind of tell real, genuine people, okay? And you can tell people that are genuinely fake. You know, it's up to you to decide to continue on or to stop. So I can kind of understand that because with mad crap, that's our goal. You know, money, it takes money to, you know, to keep the doors open. But for me, my customers have become family and they mean everything to me. So I'm more about quality. And I feel like if I can't put that quality product across the window, I'd rather be sold out. I'd rather not have it. I'd rather not order it because I refuse to sell my customers something that I wouldn't eat myself. Sometimes they don't understand that point of it. You know, they get upset when we don't have or we don't, but how more upset would you be if I just gave you, you know, here, just take this and pay me for it. Mm -hmm. That's not what we do around here. It's all about quality. We try to treat everybody like family. And we understand, like you say, we never claim to be the best. We stay in our lane. I don't look at anybody else's competition. I just want to be better than I was the day before. You know, better than I was last year. And that's my goal with Mad Crab. I'm looking to leave a legacy to my three children. You know what I'm saying? When I'm, yeah. So I want to be, you know, my kids, they work in here with me. My dad, my dad is here. And it's kind of like a family thing. And we are family. So when everybody walks through that door, like when I first met y'all, it was like we know, we had known each other forever. And we had just met each other. You know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of vibe that I like. And like I said, you could tell when people are, are real or you could tell what the, the motive that right. people have. The heart. So, you know, when anybody comes in here, I want you to feel like you're a part of us, like you're a part of our family. And be willing to tell us, like, you know, if something is not right, it's, it's not right, you know? And let's, let's figure out a way to fix it, you know? Right. So, um, that's, I'm real big on that. And, um, you know, I was thinking about you guys, and you know, nowadays everybody has access to devices like iPhones and, and cell phones that can do, take pictures and things of that sort. So right. what do you guys feel like is the difference between professional photography and like doing photography as a hobby, you know? Uh, is there a difference for you? You know, do you feel like there's a difference? I ain't gonna lie to you. Nowadays, nah. nah. <laughs> like, I ain't gonna be one of the people that like, oh, Bitches like you took a bitch on the iPhone because in reality, right? iPhone quality is uh, and not even pretty me, good. If you look at old pictures, well-respected images, when the cameras were able to do the quality that they're, they're doing right now, mm -hmm. like they can be considered as oh bad photos because of the quality is in there. To me, I think it's more so about perspective, your angles, and things like that. And what is the picture saying? What do you, this picture speak, you know. Uh, my, my friend uh, Fletcher, he said, you know, his face, he said, you know, let these pictures tell your story, tell the story with, with, with your eyes. You know, read, read these pictures with your eyes, like see, you know, pictures should tell a story. And they should, and they should speak to you, not literally saying, oh, you know, after you work, but it should just really jump out to you like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Oh, you know, I wonder what that person was doing. So, you talking about a picture is a picture. That's how I feel. Truth. When I had my booty camera, I was taking them pictures. Them pictures were the most fire things to me at the time. I can't say that they are today. <laughs> but <laughs> at the but time, at that that's what time, yeah. you know, I feel exactly. like that's what mattered more than anything. Where you are like, at that moment. Right, yeah, and I feel like if it didn't matter to you, if it, it was a part of your journey, I feel like that's what makes a picture, mm -hmm. you know, you know, matter. Because either way, if it's a freaking picture at the end of the day, now when you're talking about work ethic behind it, um, at a certain quality, trying to get to a certain place, a level, representing yourself at a certain stature, whether it be, you know, airbrushing, things like that, that's a whole other situation to a degree. But end of the day, all I'm saying is, a picture is a picture, and as long as you're passionate about it, behind it, I feel like that's what makes a difference. Yeah, I agree. You know, we're talking about that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's what makes a difference between knowing who just grab the camera who, who right, so, and it, it does come across in photos too because I follow a couple of different uh, photographers, and you can tell the difference in each work. And in, you can tell people, life. yeah, right. you can tell people who are passionate and people who are just taking pictures to take pictures, right. you know. So, 
Mm-hmm. Well, they think it's easy. Oh, easy to hit that button. Right. But what happens after that? Right. right. Like me, I think it's about also the, the experience as well. I mean, we have to talk about things, you know, where you may not have, you know, got the job done, you know, to the best of the person's ability that they want at the time, but we learn from it, keep going. But it's also how you handle the situation. You know, so I think that's a whole package that comes with that. When you talk about photography business, it's not about you taking pictures. How do you, how do you interact with people? How do you talk to them? You know, how do you respect, like, how you professional? You are professional. And professional to me is basically like, I, you know, I like to truly find ourselves in that nobody will ever say that they have heard me say anything disrespectful to them. Text message, person, nothing. I stick to that, right? Because you're not going to get me out of character about anything that may be misunderstood with me. So I think that speaks as well as again as a person and what you deliver. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing that I think speaks as well. But you're integrity and your character behind that. So that was, you know. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like I know Matt Crab, they care about quality. Quality food. Maybe she ain't giving you food that's fresh every freaking day. Let's try it in some way. Made to order. Made to order. Someone drop it on the floor. They ain't gonna give it to you like mm-hmm. chicken soup. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like, oh, Lord. That ain't how I go. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you don't talk like you said. Talk to you if something is wrong, you know, and we don't need anything to say that. Exactly. But fix it like a human should. Yeah. Like you would. Because a business would, especially a business like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So I was like, you gotta bring an iPhone, you wanna take pictures, take pictures. That's right. Gotta start somewhere. Start somewhere. Cause like, I, I, I started in the house, in the kitchen. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. This and I ain't finished. This is just, I'm. This That's is a. This, this is just the beginning. I wanna, I wanna step up with another notch. I'm tripping, y'all. We ain't do the be love vibe. Hold on. We ain't sprinkling the juice. Hold on. She been um. Oh, you been? Really, why you didn't tell me? Remind me about. Uh, oh. Oh, the limo. Oh, the limo. You mean Mad oh. Crab style? Mad Crab. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So re-say that. Re-say I mean, that. I, oh, man. We, one, oh, two, three. Oh, man. We didn't get to do the, the Mad Crab. Uh, the squeeze. Right. The squeeze. The no. Mad Crab squeeze. You didn't get to do the Mad Crab squeeze. <laughs> oh, my bad. Because I did my squeeze, boo. Why you ain't remind me, boy? Hold on. The oh, Mad Crab squeeze, like that. boy. I, I should have made a face with it. Like I was mad. See the lemon? I like it on certain. Mm-hmm. Like my crab, mm, yeah. Not too much on my shrimp. Not too, too much on my shrimp. Look at it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Y'all, I'm full. <laughs> I'm over here like. I'm at that point too. Listen, I'm, I'm over here, look, I'm doing this. I'm cool too, but we're gonna close it out. But um, one thing I want to ask y'all, just a couple more questions I wanted to ask y'all, just for people, because it might be people watching that, you know, looking to start a business. It may not necessarily be photography, but for the people who are looking at starting photography, what is one thing you wish you would have known before you got when you first started? You know, what is it? Is it something that you wish you would have known? You know, like maybe something you did wrong for a long time and not realizing how easy it was. You, you know, I'm like truthfully, okay, if I wanna be like humbly deep, <laughs> I would say that I don't regret the journey. Right? That's that. But in a reality perspective, certain things that I did which I wish I would have known about certain websites that will give me uh, that I could have gotten maybe the camera I got the camera cash, which is cool. The little booty camera I got, but I could have got a better camera <laughs> uh, on a certain site, uh, you know, probably on credit, but I could have got something better. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that maybe uh, I ain't gonna lie, that's really it though. Because Everything else, I still was gonna like do is probably the same stuff. But yeah, it probably, it probably, you probably had, you had to do better. that to learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and ultimately, like I said, and that's why I said the first thing that's really it is because everything I've learned, every, everybody I meet, 
If I would have had something better, I probably would have never met you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I probably wouldn't have, did, you know, just learn the process of the things I need to learn because it's more than just, oh, getting the camera and being dope and just going far and going shooting celebrities or something like right. that. That's not, that really wasn't my goal. I didn't really, and truthfully with us at least, it's like, it's not, that's not the goal. It's like, whatever happens, happens and it's going to be because we're personal. So we don't have this mindset of just like, oh, we just this. And that's all type of things we do. It's versatile. So whatever opportunities come and it makes sense according to our standards and who we are as people and then as a business, of course, that's what we're gonna do. So awesome. I mean we got other businesses though, you know, but Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I people. kinda wanted to touch on that too because um after knowing you guys for quite some time, we we found out that you did, did spoken word. <laughs> so that was so yeah that was kind of like uh a wow for us and then um i see you guys do t-shirts i mean is uh did you guys do uh, the shirts that you yeah we did them for us though oh, just... oh okay my bad my bad we just save money over here that's all oh okay okay <laughs> but okay. we do have we do have a clothing line called um, melanin rainbow um we're we're, we're chilling right now on that you know we're trying to build it and doing some things a little key with it. Um, but yeah, Melanie Rainbow, man, check us out though. You know, in the meantime, until we ready to, re, you know, rebrand and release everything else that we got going on. But And they're going to make sure that that information is in the details uh, below. <laughs> but that's the other thing too. We were starting business and one thing it did for me, when I was getting photography, I realized how many more opportunities I had. Like, is I was like, oh, okay, I did this. And not to say exactly these are the thoughts of, now what else can I do? I just start doing stuff. You start being around, you start going to website you never thought they existed or playing with stuff. Your mind starts going in this artistic way. Should at least. Um, you know, and I just start playing with one website, me and the clothing designer. I sold a couple little things at the time, but I kept going. I never stopped. Those stories you hear with celebrities and all these people talking stories, clothing design business, stuff like that, that's a real thing. Because eventually you eventually get something that sticks and then yeah. boom, that's it. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like Melanie Rainbow is it. And that's why I'm taking my time, you know, trying to, you know, we are taking our time to make sure we get everything properly right before we re-release it again, you know, because we want to make sure that it's what we want it to be. Well, make sure I get my shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got, we got shirts in the house. We should have one, Yes. Oh, God, we can I'll tell y'all what size after we, you know, yeah. set the cameras down. Yeah, we got But yeah, man, start that business, man. Yeah, you know, don't do be afraid. It. Just do it. Just do it. Just like with her, we had to push up. Yeah, yeah. Just start. Yeah. That's I hard. wish, listen, had we, had I been not so afraid to get out of my comfort zone, we would have been doing these videos over a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, over a year ago. But people don't know, you know, people mm -hmm. You know, so it's like ideas that I've had and then I see other people and I'm like, man, I talked about this last year. Mm -hmm. And now, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, now it's more about less talking and more action. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at. And I really do, like I said, I have you guys to thank for that. Um, and, and people that are on my team, you know, people that are in my corner. And I, I guess it just took that push for, you know, y'all that push because you actually had what I needed. Right. You know, what other excuse do I have? Yeah. I got a, a, my team right here. Mm -hmm. There was no excuse, so, right. uh, and we made that happen. So I know for me, I think about my business and I think about where I want it to go, where I want to be at in one year, three years, five years. Um, do you guys ever think about that? Like, do you guys, or you just kind of just go with it? Or do you say, you know what, in five years, this is where I want to be, or this is what I want to do? We're thinking about moving to Georgia, definitely. Yeah, who? I know, uh, I know about where you're here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know you're going to win it. I know you're going to win it. Listen, but of course we can travel back and forth. It's nothing to, you know. And we have set times for this. Okay, excuses, you know, excuses. So, no, no excuses. We got well, to. Well, you know, I bust tires and windows, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? I do all the above, so. No, no but truthfully, got... it's because, you know, and of course, you know, we just want to get the vibe, you know, see the dog, like, I'm dog. 
So. But not only that, opportunity is everywhere. Yes. You know, there's opportunities, and and you can't wait for opportunity to go to come to you. Yes. Sometimes you have to go and grab that opportunity. True, but as a man, you know, it is kind of like scary because you don't know what's gonna happen, what's not gonna happen. Because this is how you know, it's my full time job. So. Um, well, luckily it is Atlanta because that is close enough for you to be able to mm-hmm. to bounce back and forth. Right, right, You're not right, going right. to yeah, Dallas or LA or. Yeah. We can't yeah. we we leave the connections here in the sense of, you know, meaning the, the, the inquiries that's going to happen, the, the business that's going to come, whether it be weddings and stuff. We can't leave the total period anyway. It's going to have to be back. And we know right. we have any desire to leave completely. Right, right. right. Because just to broaden your foundation, you know right? I'm saying so. The foundation is built here, so you know. But if anything, that's what we think about in the next year or so. Um, but as for like, oh, oh, we want to be here at this place, shoot this and that person, or we'll have this many uh, weddings, maybe. Like I said, one thing I've been paying attention to, and my wife and I, we sit there and talk about it at times. You know, it's like this process, man. You have to learn to enjoy it. Yeah. Like they say that, but you, I really know what that means now. It's like you really gotta like enjoy. pay attention. And that's what I feel like enjoy. Like pay attention to what's going on. You might want to be this place where that place. I'm like, I don't really desire it. I never really have. It's just that. First of all, one thing I really truly got honestly is balance. And I want to be out of that piece. I don't want to be like so busy to the point that I just can't like enjoy it. Right. Like, right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to be able to travel. And my wife, you know, going and chill. And, you know, with our little dog Teddy or something like that, <laughs> to feel like having a baby or something. You know what I'm saying? And just kind of like enjoy life like that. So I haven't really thought about like that. So that's our goal. Yeah. That's your goal. <laughs> that's yeah. our. That okay. would be our goal. Well, that's good. You know, because we all, you know, we have to set goals for ourselves. Set goals right. just as well as we set boundaries for everything you know that we have going on in our life. You know, I learned that from being a, a mother, a business owner, right, right, right. a sister, a friend. You know. Oh, and then we have goals, but it's not like. Uh-huh. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's Obtainable. Like, how can we do this stuff better? How can we edit this quicker? How can we. Right, you know, right. Yeah, you know, that's just so, yeah, techniques. Yeah, yes. tech, yeah. So that, if anything, that's what we do. We have that. But, you know, but one thing about us, we don't really talk about what we do and what we try to learn. <laughs> we just don't do it and you're going to see you got done with it. And that's it. <laughs> So I definitely want to thank you guys for, like I said, I can't thank you enough for the push. I want to thank you guys for joining me because I know that you guys aren't big on being in front of the camera. What you do is behind the camera and your work speaks for itself. So you really don't need to show face because your work speaks for itself. But I do want to close out with a mad crap motivational moment. And I just want to let the people know that you have to have faith. Okay, if you allow fear to take over, you will lose focus. That is, I, I needed to hear that myself. So, you know, I, I, kind of, I had to get rid of that fear, and to the next level I go. Get pushed out that way. Pushed out that way. So, until next time, thank you guys. Until next time, peace. peace.